And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him after the former manner. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for unlikely servants, Lord. We thank you, Father, for calling us, Lord, unlikely servants, Father. Lord, we thank you for the privilege and the honor, the opportunities that you give us to serve you, Father, to build your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for the example of the man of God that we see here in Scripture, Lord, that he was a servant, Father, an unlikely servant, with the cause. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for the cause of Christ that you have given us, Lord. That as we serve and follow his example, Lord, although we were not, Father, the, the most likely, Lord, you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, Father, that we may serve you and build your kingdom, Father, in Christ's likeness, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the ultimate Savior, the ultimate servant, Father. Lord, and we thank you for his blood, that through him, Lord, that we can serve and build your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The unlikely servant. Thank you, musicians. The unlikely servant with the cause. Amen. That's the title of today's message. Amen. Because um, we have all been called to serve. Whether we like it or not, we will serve. We stand on the side of serving either God or serving the enemy. Jesus said, either you are with me or you are against me. Amen. There, there is no in between in this life. We will serve. Amen. We will serve by choice or we will serve by default. The reality is that all of us who are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, all of us born sinners and enemies of God, we start off serving the enemy. And it's through the blood of Jesus, through the grace, through Jesus Christ, that we we're able to actually serve God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Jesus says you cannot serve two masters for either you will love one and hate the other. Or you will hold on to one and, and despise the other. Amen. So there is no in between. Amen. We are servants, whether we do it by choice to serve a holy and living God or whether we do it by default to choose to serve our own means, our own ends, and in actuality, we'll end up serving Satan. Amen? Amen. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some characteristics of the unlikely servant with the cause, and I'm going to be using David as our model. Amen? There's five characteristics that I've noticed as I observe Brother David, amen? amen? Unlikely servants, number one, unlikely servants are faithful in the small unseen areas. Amen. Number two, unlikely servants see problems as opportunities. Right. Number three, the unlikely servant has the correct view of himself and the opposition. Mm -hmm. Number four, Unlikely servants will face opposition. And number five, unlikely servants are driven by a cause. Amen. 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 In, the, in the book of um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, we, we read how um, we pick up in the middle of the children of Israel already in lined up for battle. Right. And David, he comes out. And he's actually sent out there by his father, Jesse. And his older brother, he sees him and he's like, what are you doing here? I know the pride in your heart. I know the arrogance that you have. I know that you just came out here to see a battle. You know, what, what are you doing here? And, and David, he says, is there not a cause? The, 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 the 
best place that we can be as servants is consumed with the cause. Where the cause, it, it, it takes full consummation of our mind, our wills, and our emotions to the point where that is the only thing in view. That is the only thing that matters. Not a battle, not a, a big enemy or a small enemy or an inside enemy, not any circumstance externally around us, but the cause of Christ and him alone being the chief focus, the chief thing that has grabbed a hold of our heart. That that is our focus. And that is our goal. Amen. See, because when we get consumed with the cause, nothing else really can take us off track. When we are focused on the cause, we, we, we're not even considering the fact that we are the unlikely servant. We are only focused on pleasing God and him alone. We are, we are serving the audience of right. one. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. That, that's the kind of servant that I want to be. The unlikely servant with the cause. Amen. 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 So we see, we see, and David was the youngest in verse 14. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul, but whenever you see a but in the Bible, pay attention. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Amen. So you have his brothers are gone out to the battle. They ready to go in, put in some work for the kingdom. Amen. And David says, but he went and took care and tended his father's sheep. See, there's some things in life that we can get caught up in. There's some circumstances, some events that may seem more interesting. They may seem more intriguing. Yeah. But what God wants us to do is he wants us to be, to be tending to our father's sheep. All right. we, oh, we've all been called to shepherd in one way or another. You don't have to have a title to have a shepherd's heart, amen. You, you don't have to have a position to tend to the flock of God, to, to see to it that the things of God, the things of your father's house is well taken care of. Right. The Bible says, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Number point number one, unlikely servants are faithful in the small unseen areas. You see, when David was tending to his father's sheep, there was nobody around. There was no one to observe and to take note. There was no one to give him accolades. It was just him, his father's sheep, and his, his instruments of worship. Amen. And, and, these, and, these, and these, these quiet, secluded moments is when David built and established his relationship with the Lord. It, these are the times where David had nothing but opportunity to praise. <laughs> he's out there in the wilderness, wherever. He's, he's seeing to it that his father's sheep are protected and fed. And guess what he's doing meantime? He's worshiping God. You see, sometimes God will put us in that place as unlikely servants. He'll put us in the unseen place for us to be able to get to that place of worship with him. It won't be a place of accolades. It won't be a place of adulation and recognition by man. But it'll be in that place where it's just us and God and what he's called to do. And we have an opportunity to build a life of worship around this. Amen. David, he was building his relationship. He was connecting with God in this unseen place, not knowing that it will prepare him for a place where that cause will be ignited by a circumstance and what God had already deposited on the inside of him would be released. Because, see, God is putting us in some unseen places. He's putting us in some private places. He's isolating us for us to get before him for that time when he's ready to release us into what he has called us to do with the very thing that he has placed on the inside of us in those lonely moments in those times where we did not know how the circumstance would be what like what would be the outcome and we got before him and we worshiped him we sought him in prayer amen so when the time came for us to be released uh -oh. then it was our destiny that we would be stepping in you see david did not know before this circumstance when even he would receive ridicule from his brethren that he 
would be released into his destiny. He wasn't concerned. He didn't come out saying, oh, God, you know me. I worship you, God. I'm your number one worshiper, Lord. Look at all the songs I wrote you, Lord. No, he got consumed with the cause. He came out of a place of worship, and he saw the cause, and the Spirit of God on the inside of him connected with the cause, and David was consumed with the cause. Amen? The unlikely servant with the cause. Those unseen areas are beautiful. Those private places are anointed. They are amazing. These are the areas where God will speak to you in ways that no one can speak to you. These are the places where God will reveal himself to you in ways that no one has any capacity to even match. Amen. He is the matchless redeemer. Amen. He is the matchless creator. Amen. He is the matchless lover. Amen. He is the, the matchless one. There's nothing here on earth that can compare with being consumed with the cause of Christ, being connected to our heavenly father where he comes down and he fellowships with us, where he communes with us. And we feel his anointing. We feel his presence. And we don't get up in pride. We get up in humility because he has shown us things about ourselves. He has shown us things about creation. He has shown us things about life that we, we eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor have it entered into the hearts of men, the thing that God has reserved for his unlikely servants. Let's a little adjustment to the narrative, amen. For those who love him, amen. Because you can't be an unlikely servant if you don't love him. Yeah. It, it's the love for him that's, that where, where the man of God said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of iniquity. Amen. I'd rather pick up trash on the house, in, 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 on the floor in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of iniquity. Amen. I'd rather greet people that may not want to be greeted than to dwell in the tents of iniquity. I'd rather clean toilets than to dwell in the tents of iniquity. Amen. I love the opportunity to feed his little sheep than to dwell in the tents of iniquity is nothing like being in that place of the unlikely servant he prepares us behind closed doors our Lord Jesus he said go into the room and close the door and commune with me it's behind those closed doors where he prepare us we are being prepared latter rain we are being closed off from the world to be prepared to be deposited into what God will release to a lost and dying world. We are being prepared right now. We are being tucked away on the corner somewhere in Fort Wayne, Indiana to be released to a lost and dying generation. Those times where we want to go and do it and God don't allow us to do it, it's because he's preparing us. Those things that you know that dwell in our heart that we don't like, that sometimes come to the surface, that God keeps us tucked away to deal with, it's because he's preparing us. He's preparing us in those unseen places to release us into what he has called us to do because there's some giants out there that we need to take down. There's some causes that we need to fight for, but they are all centered in the cause of Christ. You see, it's in those private places where God will give us those small victories. Yeah. It was in the private, unseen place where David was tending to his father's sheep, where a lion tried to take one of his father's sheep. And the anointing that rests on it, and you better believe he had to be anointed for that. His name wasn't Samson, it was David. He was a little ruddy Israelite. He wasn't given the strength beyond normal men, no. He, his strength was in his worship. That was his strength. It's an ability to worship God. Our strength is in our ability to worship God. Amen. Not, not in our ability to, to build our natural state. Amen. It was in this private place where he grabbed the beard of the lion and he snatched back his father's sheep. You see there's some lions out there because there's a lion that roams this earth seeking whom he may devour. He comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. And there's some Israelites, there's some anointed ones up in here, there's some Christians up in here that God is infilling in those unseen places to go and grab that beard of that lion and pull his sheep. You see, there's some people out there that the lion is trying to devour. There's some lost souls out there that the lion is trying to consume. He's coming to kill, to steal and destroy. And God has sent us right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana to grab the mane of the enemy, amen, and snatch back his sheep, amen. Hallelujah. He's preparing us 
latter rain. He's preparing us to go to war, amen, because the battle is the Lord's, amen. 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 It was in this private place. It was in this private, unseen place where even a bear, even a bear tried to come after his father's sheep. And somehow, something on the inside of David, I call it the anointing of God, the spirit of God, amen, that makes us as bold as a lion. Yeah. Where he just, he, he, he slew the bear, amen, with his bare hands. Yeah. Yeah. Not by power, not by might, yeah. but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. God is preparing us in these unseen places you, to be these unlikely servants, amen. So we have to be faithful. We have to be faithful in these unseen areas. I know it, it does get hard. We do get frustrated. Things don't go our way. But you know what? The sacrifice that we give in spite of, it pleases God. It pleases God when we put aside our flesh, when we put aside our own desires, and we lift up his cause. And, 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 and his cause becomes our banner. His cause becomes our reckoning. Where, where it, it is not the common sense that we would, we would use. It's not our only intellect. But it's his cause that drives us in these unseen places. In verse 16 it says, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. <laughs> Your opposition has a shelf life. It was 40 days that this Goliath, that this enemy would, would have the nerve, the gall, the unmitigated gall, the audacity to defy the armies of the living God, to dare someone to come out and fight with him. But eventually, my word says that his challenge eventually got met by opportunity amen amen David's willingness to serve was the an answer to someone's prayer latter rain our willingness to serve it's the an answer to somebody's prayer can you believe that God will use us to be an answer to somebody's prayer. Yeah, yeah. Our willingness to serve. Never take for granted. Never take it lightly. Your willingness to serve. How that can answer someone's prayer. See I don't know about you. But my covering. <laughs> my covering is an answer to my prayer. Yeah, yeah. Oh see you didn't see those unseen nights. Yeah. Where I would come home. Smelling like you know. Tasting like you know what. Yeah. And, 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 and I would find myself in that unseen place knowing how wretched I am. Mm -hmm. Going before God, knowing that if I die in that miserable state, that I would bust hell wide open. And going before God, nobody knew. And asking for his grace and his mercy. Not knowing that that prayer would eventually be answered in 1999. It wasn't another summer. <laughs> we are the answer to somebody's prayer. Thank you, Lord. you see, you see, I'm a last born. So for my last, I'm a plug for my last borns. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sometimes as last borns, we 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 feel very unlikely. Oh, sure, we can we can you know, spark some, you know, something interesting into certain environments and situations. That's just how God made us. That's, I guess sometimes that come with being a last born. But deep down, deep down, sometimes people don't know the struggles. Because see, as a last born, sometimes you're the last to get put in charge of something. <laughs> you're the last to actually be able to do something, you know. And, and so you, a lot of times you can struggle as a last born with a lot of insecurities. But you know what? We can all relate whether you were first born. You can still relate to being in situations where you just deep down you just know you unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're, we're, but that's a good place. Yeah. Because that's where we depend on him. Amen. 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 Good. It's good out there. 
So our willingness, our willingness to serve, to be a servant, our willingness, amen, is an answer to somebody's prayer. Verse 17, and Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for thy brethren an ephah of his parched corn and the host and run to the camp of thy brethren and carry these 10 cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. <laughs> You see, that's the, that's the heart of a worshiper. You know, when, when praise and worship come on and you hear some folks shouting, some folks is shouting because of a victory. A victory that sometimes you just came out of or you hoping for. Sometimes that's what that shout is all about. It's not about being seen if it's right. It's not about being noticed. It's about this something that you know God has brought you out of. And you know that there's something on the horizon and you got to shout, amen, for that victory, amen. You know that God, he enjoys that shout, amen. And just like the man of God was running into the battle, he had to shout, amen. My God, my God, look at this. It's time to go to war. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that David was excited for knowing my brother, my brother, my, oh my brother, my big bros, they going to battle. Look at Israel, we going to battle against these uncircumcised Philistines. The battle, the victory is the Lord's, amen. Shout unto God, amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this victory, Father. Lord, I see this victory, Father. I know it's coming. Why? Because in the unseen place, you deliver me from the lion. You deliver me from the bear. I see nothing but the sheep of Israel out here. And they're going to get delivered from these Philistines. Amen? Amen. Not knowing the unlikely deliverer. <laughs> who it would be. Amen. So David shouted for the battle. Yeah. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle. Had put the battle in array. Army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage. And ran into the army. And came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. You know, I heard a teaching, and, 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 and the man talked about Goliath and Gath, and there was an association with Goliath, Gath, and um, Golgotha. And, 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 you know, I'm not saying that this is like, you know, like, a, you know, this is not doctrine. So, it, it, you know, but what, 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 what some theologians say is that the reason why um, Golgotha was called the place of the skull is because there were Nephilim that were buried under that mound. And we know that Goliath was a Nephilim. And, and so, <laughs> you know, when, when th this could be figurative of, or prophetic of Christ going to take authority over the enemy. Amen? Right. Amen. And, and, and so, here you have David. And the Bible says, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words and David heard them and David heard them so you can imagine ruddy little David he's excited you know he comes out you know shouting victory for the armies of Israel praising God he comes up and and you know he came he, he'd been obedient to his father his father said to go and feed his brethren Amen. He used to feeding sheep. No big deal, right? And he's excited. So he goes up and he's probably shaking hands and how's it going? You know, and he's excited, right? But then all of a sudden, the Bible says Goliath comes out and, and here he is 
taunting the armies of Israel. And the Bible says, and David heard him. Yeah. You see, there, there, there are situations that God has prepared us for. That when we find us there, we excited. We just want to praise God. We want to celebrate the victory. We excited for other people. David wasn't coming out there to try to go to battle and make a name for himself. He's just out there celebrating the, what, what God is doing. And then all of a sudden, he heard something. You see, there, there are some circumstances that God is preparing us for. And once we get there, you know, we, we can't prepare ourselves. But we'll get there, and all of a sudden, we'll hear something. On the, and, and that thing that we'll hear, it'll spark something that's already there on the inside of us. Why? Because we were prepared in that unseen place. Unlikely servants see problems as opportunities. That's the second point. All right. I'm trying to get through them. I'm really. Unlikely servants see problems as an opportunity. You see, David gets there. He hears the taunt. And it's like, wait a minute. Everything came to a pause because he heard something else. Because while everybody else was shaking in their boots, David got a spark in his spirit and said, wait a minute. Who do he think he is? Did I hear what I just thought I heard? Because we not out here for battle, amen? Yeah. And all the men, verse 24. Let me say this real quick. The unlikely servant will either hear or see others' problems as opportunities that will quicken his or her spirit to respond. We will hear other people's problems or we will see something. It will quicken us. To respond in verse 24 and all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid and the men of Israel said have ye seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give his daughter and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? He see opportunity. And taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You see, in our circumstance, when we hear... When nobody else is hearing and it moves us, what we have to be recognized is that this is not between us because we, we, we battle not flesh and blood. Amen. And so when, when, when we hear these situations and, we, and, and we've been prepared in an unseen place and it's time to respond, it's like, wait a minute, who, who is this? You see, if you can imagine the mindset of the natural man I mean, he's like 15 feet tall, nine feet, however tall he was. Mm -hmm. They ran. It's like a giant man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the natural eye saw that. And in a way, that's kind of like common sense. Mm -hmm. right. but, but see, the, 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 the unlikely servant moved by the cause is not moved by common sense. Oh, no. Because see, our thoughts are not like his thoughts. Right. Our ways are not like his ways. Right. And David... David looked at the circumstance. An unlikely servant will look at the circumstance and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Uh -huh. Who is this who has the nerve to challenge the armies of the living God? Right. You see, um, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes we need to look at our situation and, and, and we need to be a little bit indignant mm -hmm. and say, how dare, how dare the enemy come against the child of God. How dare the enemy come against the house of God? How dare the enemy come against the anointing of God? You see, that, 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 that courage, that indignation, it goes back to the unseen place. So, so when the enemy has the nerve, we look through the spirit and we are stirred and we are convicted and we say, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
How dare the enemy think he can run roughshod all over Fort Wayne? How dare the enemy think he can run roughshod over my co-workers, over my community? Wait a minute. How dare this uncircumcised Philistine have the nerve to go against the armies of the living God? It's not pride. It's not arrogance. It's called conviction. Conviction about the things of God. No, wait a minute. You see, God has delivered me from way too much. God delivered me from a lie. He delivered me from a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be the same. He delivered me an imperial beast. He delivered me in my private time. He delivered me from the stuff. You know, those stuff. I'm just going to generalize the stuff. That's fill in the blank. He delivered us, and if he delivered us, how dare this uncircumcised Philistine have the nerve to come against the armies of the living God? We are his church. We are alive. Amen. Not dead. Amen. We are not a dead church, Latter Rain. Right. How dare this Goliath have the nerve to come out here 40 days and taunt the armies of the living God? What happened? What happened? Have you rolled over? Have you become soft? Who are you? Where's your prayer? Where's your fasting? Where's your conviction? How dare you run away from this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is he in the eyes of the living God? He is nothing. And he is nothing to the armies of the living God. So here they are running and cowering. And then on top of that, what? You mean, God, you're going to pour out some blessings? I do this for free. You can't pay me for this. And on top of that, you mean you're going to bless me for taking out this uncircumcised Philistine? I have God with me. And if God is with me, who can be against me? By the time we look at the circumstance and the Holy Spirit on the, on the inside of us gets stirred, that conviction comes out. And you like, wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, God is with me. I mean, we do this for free, Lateran. Yeah. This is what we do. Right. This is what we do. Y'all yeah. y'all y'all scared of him? Don't you know that we are the army of the living God? Yeah. We finna get some some little bonuses for this? <laughs> I mean, come on, think about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, we in America, y'all. Right. God is still, look, look, I'm not on that prosperity stuff. This right. is not where I'm going. Right. God is still in the business of blessing. Amen. Okay? He's still in the business of blessing. We don't do it for the blessings. Right. We do it for the cause. Right. But my God, I mean, if he going to throw some blessings in there, I mean, that's just a little extra motive. I mean, I was motivated to begin with. Right. Right. This is what we do. Right. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, you know, the man of God inquired. We going to, wait, wait a minute, what'd you say? Um, so you, you kill him and and um, you know, you know, get married and riches, and you know, I mean, God, I mean, come on. The Bible says that His eyes is on the sparrow, mm -hmm. so you know He care about us. Right. God know we want to get married. Right. Did He not? <laughs> Did He not conquer that Goliath or something? <laughs> hey, he better conquer some more, right? <laughs> sometimes, hey, that, 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 yeah, singleness sometimes can be a beast, <laughs> but that's when you get in an unseen place. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So when you rise up and you see that beast, you can take him out. Right. I got five stones, amen. Right. All right. And 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 David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? <laughs> he inquired, this little ruddy Israelite inquiring, like, wait, so uh, what's it? What, what? Okay. All right. And taking away the reproach from Israel. That's the real thing that David is moved by. Yeah. Because he, 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 his conviction is how dare he defy the armies of the living God. I get to take away this reproach from Israel. We get to wipe the church clean of this mess. We get to defeat this foe. Oh, man. Look. It, okay, let me go. Focus. All right. Uh, for, um, point three. Point three. The unlikely servant has the correct view of himself in the opposition. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The difference between David and Saul's army was that David was a worshiper. They was just soldiers. 
yeah, I, I know you got the AR-15. I, I know you got the new heat sink device and the, the laser optic and, you know, the, the, the bulletproof vest. And I know you got, and it looks nice. It's very impressive. When I came out here and I saw it, I was like, man, that's really cool. <laughs> but I got something that's better than that. I got worship. So, you know, you do your thing. Be a soldier. I'm a soldier of the living God. Yes. See, my, 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 I have a correct view of myself. I'm not going to get built up in what I got mm -hmm. outside of me. Right. I'm going to get built up on what got me on the inside of me. Amen. And, and while you being a good soldier on the outside, I could be a good worshiper on the inside. David knew about the secret place, and they didn't. Psalm 91, verse 1 through 3. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Blessed be the Lord. My rock, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, in whom I will take refuge. See, that's what David knew. They didn't know about that. Amen. You see, when certain things go down and everybody running, God has placed something on the inside of us that will cause us to stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen? Amen. Amen. While they were arrayed for battle, David was prayed up for battle. Amen. You know, that, that word array is it, an impressive display or range of a particular type of thing. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Oh, it was impressive. It was impressive. You see, the things that impress the world, it don't impress unlikely servants. Mm. And, and, and while they arrayed up, we prayed up. That's, that's how we want to do it. Verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, why comest thou down hither and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle unlikely servants will face opposition and sometimes the very people who you have been called to serve may misinterpret our true motives okay Sometimes the very people who we have been called to serve may misinterpret our true motives. So Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. 1 Corinthians 16.13-15 Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all your things be done with charity or love. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You know, in the world, when I was addicted, I would accept the abuse of my addiction. Can we be like that in the house of the Lord? You see, sometimes we get addicted to sin, and we will endure that abuse. We will treat it like a ministry. And then God will deliver us and give us a real ministry. Can we get addicted? Can we get addicted beyond reproach, beyond abuse? Although they will misinterpret our true motives and say, look at your prideful, arrogant self, who you think you is. Just a ruddy little Israelite. <laughs> I'm going to take out this giant, amen. That's the heart of the church. Amen. So, so we have to be able to love past it. Right. Let all you do be done in love. Amen? Amen. And verse 29. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And check this out. And the people answered him again after the former manner. 
Point five, unlikely servants are driven by the cause. So literally, you have David in a situation where he's trying to state his claim. He's trying to explain his purpose. His brother is the first one, the close sometimes what's closest to us. We can't blame him because they can't see our heart. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we have to be consumed with the cause. And so after he, he like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Is there not a cause? Is there not? A, I mean, you see this dude? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take this? And then he turned to the others. It said, is there not a cause? Hey, y'all. Like, okay, that's my brother. You know, familiarity. It's okay. Hey, do you, do you guys see this guy? And the Bible says they all answered as the foremost. They followed in suit with what his brother said. Man, get out of here, man. So David is meanwhile, dude, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? He's trying to plead with the people. Have you ever found yourself trying to plead with the people? trying to connect them to the cause but because they wasn't prepared in the unseen place they don't see what you see and now you look like the the the, the boastful arrogant one and you're like dude this ain't what i'm trying to get you to focus on you're looking on the outside you're looking on the flesh i'm trying to show you the spirit there's a cause there's a cause we got an uncircumcised philistine out here talking crazy about the church of god are we just gonna take it or are we gonna fight i mean don't worry about me dude go ahead fight i'm pretty sure david would have stood aside for one of the older ones to go out there and go to war right right he was moved by the cause that's all he saw he didn't see his size. He didn't see his age. He didn't see his ethnicity. He didn't see his financial standing. All he saw was the cause. All he saw was the victory and the victories that God had already delivered him from. And he said this uncircumcised Philistine will be the same. And now he's begging and pleading like, hey, guys, let's handle this. And they are not feeling him. So we have to be driven by the cause because it's the cause of Christ that will keep us going when nobody else wants to keep going with us. It's the cause of Christ that will make us stand out there alone against giants when nobody else wants to stand with us. It's the cause of Christ that will cause us to get in the trenches and work like it all depends on work. Amen. It's the cause of Christ that will cause us to win our community for Jesus, to build a church of God worldwide, and to win souls everywhere. It's the cause of Christ that will cause us to serve when we don't feel like serving. It's the cause of Christ that will cause us to serve when no Nobody recognizes it's the cause of Christ that will cause us to put our flesh aside and step out and do what God has called us to do because the cause of Christ is really the Holy Spirit driving us Amen. driven by the cause Philippians 3 7 through 9 you don't have to turn there but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ yea doubtless and I count all things but a loss for the excellency of the knowledge of God, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Count it all. Loss. Count it all done. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. But seeing Jesus, I can't sing it. Y'all know the song. Feel it. Feel it in the spirit. Nothing else matters. But seeing Jesus. I want to look in the mirror and see Jesus. I want other people to look at me and see Jesus. I want to look at my circumstance and see Jesus, Christ, and Him crucified. My hope of glory. Let's go to verse 46. Let us look at every opposition to the cause of Calvary like this. Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. 
and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You see, the head represents authority. You think you got authority, Goliath? You think you got authority over the living God? I'm going to take that head right off of you. I'm going to take that authority right off of you. Why? Because I'm an ambassador of Christ. We have to look at our opposition. We have to look at our Goliath. And we have to be a little indignant sometimes. We have to be a little bit convicted sometimes. Knowing that God is for us. So who can be against us? That we are the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. Psalm 27, 3 through 5. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, which is Christ. He's hiding us in the unseen place. It doesn't matter where we end up on this planet, what circumstance we end up in. He is our rock. He is our fortress. He is our high tower. He is our refuge. He is the one that we run to in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you with these five points. As you consider the man of God, consider the unlikely servant and consider yourselves. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for calling us, Father, or as, as those unlikely servants, Father, Lord, to establish your kingdom, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we thank you for equipping us, Father. We thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord, for which we can praise you and worship you and magnify you and seek after your face, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Well, Lord, we pray, Father, that as we seek you, Father, hallelujah, Lord, that you will visit us, Father, that you will empower us, Father, to go out and make a mark on this generation that will not be erased, Father, and we will see to it, Father, that you are glorified, Father. We will lift up Christ, Lord, that all shall be drawn unto him, Lord. We thank you for calling us here to Fort Wayne, Father. We thank you for calling us to win Fort Wayne for you, Father. To win souls here, Father. To build your church here, Father. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, for this opportunity, Father. We do not count it a small thing, Father, but we count it as a privilege and an honor, Father, hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for giving us the hearts of servants, Father, hallelujah, Lord. Just as Christ condescended to the form of a man and took on the form of a servant, Father, hallelujah, then we definitely, Father, as as mere men, Lord, should take on the form of servants, Father. Hallelujah. Let us be servants, Father, from the inside out, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Give us the hearts of servants, Father. Hallelujah. Consume with the cause of Christ, Father, to go, Lord, to war, Father, in the spirit, Father, against all enemies, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that your kingdom may be established in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to I wanna pray for anybody.